We are in the conservatory today because we are taking advantage of the glorious June weather. Today I'm doing the time of the day book tag and I was tagged to do this by the wonderful Christoria2027. They tagged me and they approached me and asked like would I like to do this tag and they asked if I was busy and I said I wasn't busy and then I would do the tag and then it took me around two months to get to it so I really apologise for that. I really enjoy the questions in this tag and I really enjoy the content and the videos that Christoria puts out. Definitely recommend that you go and check them out. First question is Time to Wake Up, a book that opened your eyes to a genre you had never read before. So for this question I chose Life of Pi by Jan Martel and I picked this one because I think it was the first magical realism book that I ever read. It is about a young boy called Pi who's on a ship. What happens is the ship sinks and Pi ends up on a lifeboat on his own with a bunch of animals and a Bengal tiger and lots of weird and wonderful things happen along the way. What's funny about this one is that I didn't enjoy it when I read it because like I said it was the first time that I'd ever come across magical realism. I didn't understand the concept of it at all and it's kind of ironic considering that it's one of my favourite genres now, I love it. I'd really like to go back to this book and read it again and see whether I actually enjoy it more. The second question is No Time for Breakfast, a book that has been sitting on your shelf for ages. I chose The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger. This is about a woman who works at a fashion magazine. I have no idea when I got this book. I think my mum bought it for me when I was a teenager and I started to read it but there was swearing and things like that and I thought this might be like out of my age range and my mum just hasn't realised or something. But I have seen the film with Meryl Streep and Anne Hathaway which is one of my favourite films. I love it so much. So I do plan to get around to reading this at some point but I'm not really sure when. The third question is time to travel to work. A book you read while travelling. So for this I picked Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which I just accioed from nowhere, obviously. I picked this one because I remember specifically walking around a hotel in Mallorca when I was younger, seeing it, but I thought it was so cool. I thought it was Hermione walking around this big hotel with this mystery going on. Like, yeah, I just have very vivid memories of walking around that hotel and reading this book at the same time, so I picked that one. Number four is You've Had a Hard Time at Work, a book you struggled to get through. I picked The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes because of the size of it. You would think that I would just fly through it, but I didn't. This is about a man called Tony Webster and he is looking back at his kind of friendship group at school now that he's retired. Exactly the same with Life of Pi, it was one of my first experiences with literary fiction and that genre and I didn't really know what to expect going in. Maybe it was a few years too old for me, so maybe it's another one that I should go back to and read again and see whether I don't fly through it this time. Number five is Lunchtime, a quick and easy read. For this I chose A Never Ending Story by Michael Ender. And End? Michael End? This is a children's book that I only read a few years ago and I really really enjoyed it. I didn't expect to. It's kind of a fantasy about this boy who gets transported into another world and a bookshop. So I really do recommend this to anyone of any age because it was just really enjoyable and takes you on a journey and there's magic and what more could you ask for? It is actually quite long for a children's book. It's 400-ish pages but really was a quick and easy read, so this one. Number six is Time for Your Performance Review, a book you bought because you saw someone review it. That would be The End of Mr. Y by Scarlett Thomas. We had seen quite a lot of people on booktube talking about this book and I saw it in a secondhand bookshop and look at it, it's so cool, so I picked it up. Also something that made me pick it up was the fact that on the back it says when Ariel Manto uncovers a copy of The End of Mr. Y in a secondhand bookshop, she can't believe her eyes. So it was perfect, I had to pick it up. I was in a secondhand bookshop, Ariel is like one of my favourite names and my favourite Disney princess 
and it's a really cool book and I'd seen great reviews for it so I really should get around to this. Number seven, Time to Travel Home, That's my favourite part of the day. A book that follows a character on some kind of journey. I think I had a list about a mile long for this one but in the end I went for Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll because obviously Alice goes on a journey through Wonderland. That's pretty much what it's about. Number eight is Dinner Time and Conversation. A book you don't hear people talk about much but that you loved. I picked The Book of Human Skin by Michelle Loverick and I picked this one because I feel like it's a book that a lot of people on booktube would really enjoy but I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about it before. It is set in Venice in the 1700s which for me is like yes I need to read this right now and it is told in multiple perspectives centered around this family called the Fasans. The heir to this fam family is Minguillo. And he then has a sister called Marcella and because Minguillo is kind of <laughs> evil shall we say when Marcella comes along his parents want to give her the money want her to be the heiress so Minguillo does everything in his power to destroy his sister's life and for me it was a book about good versus evil and you'll have to read it to find out who prevails number nine is time to zone out in front of the tv your favourite book that has been turned into a TV show or a film. I cheated with this one because the first thing that came into my head hasn't actually been turned into a TV show or a film but I feel like it would make a really really good like BBC adaptation so I'm going with The Luminaries by Eleanor Caton which is about a mystery in the gold fields in New Zealand set in the 1800s really explain why I think this would make a really good TV show but I just do. Number 10 is Bedtime, the book that is currently on your nightstand. So I'm currently reading A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki and I'm, I'm really only like 30 pages into it but I really enjoyed the beginning part so far. It's the diary of a girl called Now and she has written out the last days of her life and put the diary entries into a lunchbox and thrown it into the ocean and then somebody in Canada finds it and starts to read it and it's kind of about both of those stories told at the same time. And the last question is Nighttime. A book you couldn't put down so you stayed up all night to read it. I really don't have an answer for this one. I used to do that a lot more when I was younger but I've turned into a morning person suddenly over the past few years which is really disappointing to my teenager self. I have let myself down hugely in that department. I used to be the best night owl. I think nowadays if I end up staying up really late it's because I'm just hopelessly browsing the internet and refreshing feeds that don't have anything to refresh. So yeah. That's the end of the tag. Thank you so much to Christoria for tagging me. I'm going to leave who I've tagged in the description so check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! I think I had a mile long list for this question but at the end I went for Alice 